Hello friends, in this video, we will implement a current loop controller for the synchronous machine using a PI, proportional integral, controller. By the end, we will have tuned all regulators. The strategies we'll cover, from modeling to controller realization, will also be applicable to asynchronous machines. This is important because asynchronous machines are widely used in the current powertrain of electric cars. While they are cost-effective, they can be relatively challenging to control. Thus, your support for the channel is greatly appreciated. Permanent synchronous motors, due to their advantages, are a popular solution in electrical drive systems. Control strategies play a pivotal role in the operation of electric machines and have a direct impact on overall system performance. Over time, a variety of control strategies have been devised and explored for electric machines, resulting in significant advancements in industrial development and societal benefits. This playlist delves into and discusses these advantageous control strategies for electric machines, such as field-oriented control. In electrical drive systems, there's always a primary control objective, like the control of the angular speed or position of an AC motor, coupled with a secondary objective, which might be to regulate current flow. As we understand, almost all industrial variable speed drives employ a PI cascade control structure for both speed and position control. Designing a cascade control system typically starts with the secondary controller of the internal control loop system. The internal current loop controller can be either a proportional controller, as shown in our previous video, or a PI controller, which we'll be discussing today. One drawback of using just a proportional controller is that the steady-state control deviation fluctuates based on system parameters. This inconsistency can overshadow its simplicity, especially when considering performance robustness. This might explain why the majority of industrial current controllers favor the PI model. When a PI current controller is utilized, the steady-state error in the current control system is nullified, ensuring robust behavior even amidst parameter fluctuations. A typical cascade control using a dual PI configuration will resemble the diagram we've previously shown. The primary difference is that the internal loop current controller, represented by KQC, is swapped out for the PI current controller, which was covered in our penultimate video. In this discussion, we'll primarily focus on designing the speed controller in the outer loop. It's important to note that the dynamic system for the Q-axis current can be represented by a first-order differential equation. To design the outer loop PI controller, we'll examine the closed-loop transfer function between the reference signal and feedback signal. By assuming the nonlinear terms are negated using a feedforward term, we can integrate the PI controller, defined by a specific equation, into the original dynamic model for the Q-axis current, resulting in a particular closed-loop differential equation. When examining a loop, the closed loop poles are found with zeta being 0.777, and omega n acting as a tuning parameter affecting closed loop performance. The steady state gain of this closed loop transfer function remains consistent at unity when setting s to zero in this function. To design the outer loop PI control system, we will recall from our last video the transfer function model that exists between the Q-axis current, IQ, and the electrical velocity, omega e, represented by a unique equation. To design a PI controller, a first-order model is essential, as evidenced in our first three videos in this series. Since the aforementioned transfer function is a third-order model, it needs simplification to a first-order model for ease of application. One notable aspect is the parameter omega n, representing the natural frequency for the inner loop Q-axis current control. 
We select this parameter during the design to achieve a first-order approximation by selecting a significantly large omega n value and ignoring inner loop current control dynamics. Compared to the internal proportional controller from our previous video, here the steady state gain of the current control remains consistent at 1. This means the design model of the external controller is rooted in the mechanical component of the permanent magnet synchronous machine, PMSM. This design excludes the stationary component of the internal current control, ensuring that even if parameters like RS and LQ fluctuate due to temperature or other conditions, the design of the speed control remains unaffected. The natural frequency, omega n, for the outer loop control system is chosen to be much smaller than that of the inner loop control system. Using the same parameters as in our previous video, we can simulate the closed loop responses when deploying PI in loop current control and PI outer loop velocity control. In designing inner loop PI controllers, specific closed loop performance parameters are chosen for both D axis and Q axis current controllers. Using models consistent with our last video, only the Q axis controller and the controller parameters undergo modifications.